Greetings, welcome, and thank you for clicking. I'm Christian of Standing Stone Healing Company, encouraging your journey with Reiki, card reading, and coaching for life's changes, challenges, and transitions. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Ask the Stones, offering spiritual guidance and encouragement for life's challenging questions. Welcome to this episode of Ask the Stones. I am so honored to have you join me. This week's question comes from Antonio. I'm blocked and can't move forward. How do I fix it? <laughs> well, Antonio, thank you for this question. You are right to the point. Um, now, uh, of course, Antonio, I don't have any specifics here, so I'm going to speak in generalities. And uh, I will say that if this were an actual coaching session, then of course I would be asking you some questions to help uncover some of the specifics. Um, but of course, Ask the Stones is not coaching because coaching is really all about listening and asking questions to help you uncover the answers. Uh, so of course, Ask the Stones is not coaching. It is guidance and encouragement. And so if this were an actual coaching session, Antonio, I would be asking you some questions to get some specifics about your situation. But absolutely, I can talk in generalities. Um, some of the questions, Antonia, that I would be asking if we were in a coaching session would be for you to talk to me about that feeling of being blocked and that feeling of not being able to move forward. So what, what does that look like? What does that feel like if your block uh, looked had a look to it, a color to it, a sensation to it. What would what would that be? Can you describe the block to me? And asking you questions about specific areas, the specific area of your life where you feel blocked. You know, when you say I'm blocked, um, that could be in any number of areas in your life. Uh, you could feel blocked in terms of your energy or a relationship or goals your career. Uh, it could be any number of things. And so, of course, I would ask questions to help uncover that. But we can certainly talk about blocks and this feeling of not being able to move forward in a general sense. So, Antonio, thank you so much for this question. And it's actually really great that there aren't any specifics about it uh, because um, that may very well help more listeners who might be feeling blocks in any and all areas of their lives and this inability to move forward. The first thing I want to say, Antonio, about this feeling of being blocked and unable to move forward is that oftentimes it really is simply a feeling. Um, this idea of feeling blocked or feeling stuck, uh, which really kind of is this inability to move forward, is oftentimes really a feeling. And it's not so much a reality as something that we perceive. Um, this actually reminds me uh, in my choose one of three card reading for, I believe it was June, uh, the hanged man came up. And the hanged man card is a card in which a person is hanging down in a deep chasm and they are uh, hanging by the foot and unable to reach out and grasp the sides of the chasm to grab on and pull themselves up. And so the hanged man is a card portraying stuckness and the inability to move forward and just really kind of hanging and you feel like you're hanging. But so oftentimes, Antonio, this feeling of being blocked is simply a feeling. And stuckness is often, I talk about this in the uh, June Choose One of Three card reading, 
Uh, I can't remember which number it was, Antonio, so my apologies, but there may be some message that, messages there that might be helpful for you. Um, uh, maybe it was number three. I don't know. I'll put the link in the notes to that card reading, and you can have a look, Antonio, because I do talk about the hangman and that feeling of being stuck and how... Oftentimes, it really just is a feeling and it's not the reality and that we often feel more stuck than we actually are. So how do we fix this? The first thing I'm going to encourage you to do, Antonio, is to really name that blockage. Um, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What is it blocking? And you may even actually want to name it. You know, name it Fred or name it Ed or Ted or whatever. Give it a name. You absolutely can name it, um, personify it. What shape is it? Is Does it look like something? Maybe an animal, maybe an object. Name that block identify it, identify where it sits, identify what it looks like, identify maybe where it sits in your body and what that feeling is that comes along with that blockage. Um, you know, maybe uh, you feel blocked in uh, your, in, in uh, offering your voice and speaking your truth. Where in your body does that sit when you think of that block? Is that something that is maybe in your throat with your voice? Is that something that is in your heart? Is it a feeling in your gut? So check in with your body, Antonio, and the body gives us clues. The body gives us information all of the time. I don't know about you, but I am a stress in the body kind of person. Even though I am uh, definitely processing my emotions, talking about them, aware of them, my body gives me indications about my feelings and gives me um, clues. So I encourage you, Antonio, to check in with your body because the body gives clues. And asking yourself where that feeling of being blocked resides in the body. And what does that feel like? What does it look like? What is its name? So I recommend first and foremost starting there because it's a real challenge for us to get unstuck if we don't know how we're stuck. So if you think about, you know, if you have a car and it gets stuck in the mud and um, maybe you only have two tires that are stuck and you need to get yourself out of the mud. Well, it's really helpful to know first which two tires are stuck in the mud. So does that mean that you back up, move forward, turn your wheel one way or the other? So you really wanna know how you're stuck first before you try to get yourself unstuck. And then remembering that that feeling of being stuck is so often simply a feeling. We often feel like there's no way to turn, nowhere to turn, and we have no options. But the truth is that an infinite number of options are always available to us. So an infinite number of possibilities on our block or our stuck situation are always available to us, Antonio. We always have infinite possibilities to draw upon. And so when we are trying to get ourselves unstuck from the mud, we might only conceptualize, gee, I can either put on the gas and go forward or I can put on the gas and go backward. But the truth is, we have all kinds of options available to us. We can have a bunch of friends push us out. We can lay logs down to drive over. We could have a big giant crane come and pick our car up and move it. That one might be a little harder, but it's still an option, right? It is still a possibility that exists. And so, Antonio, I encourage you that when you have this feeling of being stuck to explore 
all of the numerous ways that you could get out of that situation or get yourself unstuck, no matter how crazy they might be, because there's still possibilities. So I encourage you not to limit yourself at this time and to really entertain all possibilities of getting your car out of the mud. Even if they might seem crazy, it's still a possibility. It still could happen. And to rather than say, no, 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 that, that, won't, that won't work, to explore the options. I think a lot of times when we have that feeling of stuckness, it's because we are closing off possibilities for ourselves. So we are saying, oh, that's it. No, 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 that, that's not going to work. Oh, yeah, Christian, a big giant crane. No, 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 no that is not going to work. Okay. Or um, laying down logs. Uh, okay, I got to find the logs first. Or friends, you want me to get a bunch of friends to help push the car out? Do, do you really think my friends are going to come help me push my car out of the mud? So that absolutely, that kind of closing off of possibilities is going to lead to feelings of stuckness. And that's going to actually increase our feelings of stuckness. So it's like a, a stuck cycle, Antonio, where you're closing off the possibilities and it's just making you feel even more stuck. The next thing that I'm going to encourage you to do, Antonio, is to take some small steps. So, for instance, let's say that your blockage is with writer's block, which we hear about a lot. Um, the fabled writer's block and the inability to write and you just don't have any good ideas and nothing's coming to you. Well, the way that you get around writer's block, I will say, by the way, I, I am a writer and I will say that I don't, I don't experience writer's block and I don't experience writer's block because I have a really low bar for what counts as writing. And um, when you lower the bar, then uh, you uh, are able to step over it much easier. And so Antonio, let's say that your blockage here is with writing and oh, I just can't write anything. I, I can't think of anything to write. I just don't have any ideas right now. Just write a few things. So lower the bar from writing five pages to a paragraph. Oh, a paragraph is too hard. Lower the bar. Write a couple sentences to get yourself going, to grease the wheels, and to help facilitate more movement. So Antonio, I, I'm really going to encourage you to take small movements. You know, oftentimes when we get stuck in a pile of mud, it's not the flooring it with the gas that's going to get us out. It's the rocking back and forth motion, the wiggling. The wiggling is what is oftentimes going to get us out much easier than gassing it and trying to floor our way out of the blockage, especially depending upon how deep the blockage is and exactly what it is. Um, trying to gun it might only make things worse, might only make you feel more stuck or more hopeless. I think that's really what's kind of in here, Antonio, in your question is a sense of hopelessness. I'm blocked. I can't move forward. How do I fix it? And so I think that when we take small steps and do some wiggling, it can help us to create a sense of momentum and wiggling back and forth is going to give us more room to do more wiggling and then take bigger wiggles, <laughs> bigger wiggles. I like that. Um, to take bigger wiggles and give us even more room and more space to work with. And so little by little, we are less blocked, less stuck. And so even when we feel really blocked, 
we can always wiggle a little bit. So Antonio, I want to encourage you to take those very little wiggles, whatever they might be, small, small wiggles. It doesn't matter how small it is. The important thing is to keep wiggling. So with writer's block, if you are writing a sentence, that's a wiggle. Write again another sentence tomorrow. The next day, maybe write two sentences. Show up maybe later in the day, write another sentence. Maybe the next day, write three sentences. That is wiggling. And that is progress too. And when you are making progress, you are not stuck. Stuck by its definition is an inability to move. And if you are making progress, like writing a sentence more than you did the day before, that's movement. That's progress. That is the complete opposite of being stuck. And so, Antonio, how do you get unstuck? Just take the little wiggles. Wiggle a little bit and keep wiggling a little bit. It'll turn into <laughs> bigger wiggles. Now, Antonio, along with that idea of movement, that like figurative movement, I want to encourage you to literally move. So oftentimes when we have a feeling of being stuck, a metaphorical, figurative feeling of being stuck, maybe we don't know which path to take, we, we don't know which way to turn, we don't know what choice to make, uh, we feel stuck with our career, we don't know how to move forward in our job, whatever it might be, oftentimes literally moving is good going to help us to figuratively move. And so Antonio, I'm actually going to recommend for you some physical movement. So get yourself moving, get up and go out for a walk. And again, this does not have to be a really long walk. This can be a very short trip around the block just to get your juices flowing, to get you moving. Walking is an amazing practice for bringing in fresh ideas, gaining new perspectives, seeing things in a different way. So when you go for a walk, or however you like to move, but I'm a big proponent of walking. As a matter of fact, we are actually talking about walking this week in the Encouraging Your Journey Facebook group. So I highly recommend coming on over to the group and um, learning uh, some ways that you can use walking as a meditative, contemplative, spiritual even kind of practice. So I encourage you to stop on over to the Encouraging Your Journey Facebook group for some discussion of walking at this time. But walking, Antonio, is going to be a great way for you to get some movement in. And when you are physically moving and you are physically unstuck, it's, you're kind of sending a message to the brain that, look, you're not so stuck. You are moving. You are going forward. You are making progress. Yes, this is physical, and maybe it's not exactly your problem. You know, maybe your problem is writer's block, um, and that doesn't have anything to do with physical movement, but it will help to get you in the mindset of progress and of movement. So I really want to encourage you, Antonio, to get in some physical movement to help you feel unstuck. <sighs> Antonio, I am also going to send you some Reiki for your feelings of stuckness and to uh, send you uh, Reiki for movement and progression. And to all those listening, I am going to set the intention to send Reiki to your own experience of maybe feeling blocked or stuck 
whatever that might mean to you. Um, I do, before I send Reiki, want to definitely say, though, that being blocked is always temporary. Always, always, always temporary. And so I want to send you encouragement to know that this block, whatever it is, is going to be temporary. So Antonio, I promise you, I can guarantee you this, it is not going to last because it never does. Even if you left your car in the mud and didn't bother to move it, eventually the mud is going to dry up or eventually your car is going to get towed out or whatever. It is a temporary experience. Blockages are always temporary. And I also want to encourage you, Antonio, that blockages always, always have a way through them. I think the best example of this is water. Water, I think, really shows us, proves to us that blockages are not so impenetrable as they might seem. So if you build a dam and you dam a river, water is going to get through that dam in some way, shape, or form. Now it may only be a trickle, but there's going to be a trickle. Water will find a way. And so Antonio, with a blockage, it's like that dam. The water can be dammed. It can be blocked. But guess what? Water is going to find a way. Even if it's a crack, water is going to get through that. And so not only is the block temporary, it is also not impenetrable. There is always, always, always wiggle room. You just got to find the crack and wiggle. Or Antonio, create your own crack. Create your own crack. Did I mean to say that? I guess so. Yes, Antonio, create your own crack in the dam and um, make a way for even a drop of water. That's all it takes. One drop. Then another drop comes through. Then another drop comes through. So being stuck is a feeling. Being stuck is not an absolute. Being stuck is temporary. And being stuck is a feeling. Always, always, there is a way. So I invite you to join me in taking three deep cleansing breaths. And I want to encourage you to set the intention for this Reiki, perhaps for a block that you might be experiencing or feeling in your own life. And for there to be an opening that you can see and wiggle room for you. Thank you. So Antonio, as I was sending Reiki, I had uh, the very clear image of rain. It was raining. It was pouring rain. And you know, rain has to start in some way, shape or form. 
And how does it usually start with a drop? I mean, how often are you out and you feel that first drop maybe on your head or on your hand? It's just such a light drop. And then it's a couple of drops, two drops, three drops. And then holy cow, it's pouring rain. This is exactly what it's like for getting unstuck. Eventually, Antonio, it's going to be pouring rain. But first, it starts out as a couple of drops. So I encourage you to look for those couple of drops. So, Antonio, I'm going to pull some cards for you and let's see what guidance we might have from the angels. I've grabbed the Celtic Dragon Tarot deck and let's see what pops up in this for you on this idea of feeling blocked Oops, and like you can't move forward. Out has popped the King of Pentacles. Hmm, interesting, interesting, Antonio. So the King of Pentacles is, um, let me describe the card for you. So it's a king, he's standing beside his throne, he's got his hand on his throne, he has his other hand on his sword, which is in the scabbard, in the hilt, and um, there is a dragon sleeping at the front of the throne. Now this card is about repose. It's about power. It's about rest. What I'm picking up from this card for you, Antonio, is to recognize the achievements that you have already succeeded in. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great message, angels. Thank you. Yes, um, Antonio, I think one of the things that's really going to assist you with that blocked feeling is recognizing all of the successes that you've already had, all of your achievements, and the blocks that you have already overcome. Mm -hmm. Yep, so this king standing here at the throne is one who has reflect is reflecting upon his successes and where he has gotten to and where he is right now. Um, his achievements, his riches, his success, he's in reflection mode. And I think this is really saying, hey, Antonio, we want to encourage you right now to think about all of the successes that you've already had, all of your achievements, the blocks that you have already overcome, the obstacles that you have already overcome throughout your whole life. Because the truth is, Antonio, that you have already overcome blocks. This feeling of being blocked is not new. And I'm not saying that, Antonio, in an intuitive sense that, oh, Antonio, I'm picking up that this is a problem, recurring problem for you. Nope, that is not what I'm saying. I'm saying that this feeling of being blocked is so normal that it's something that people experience and you have experienced in the past because who hasn't and you have overcome it. So feeling blocked is not a new feeling. Feeling stuck is not a new feeling. And so Antonio, you have overcome this block feel this blocked feeling before. You have overcome being stuck before. You've been stuck before. I encourage you to reflect upon the times when you have felt stuck in the past and how you have overcome those and gotten through them. How you have been the water that has seeped through the cracks and busted down the dam, how you have been the first couple of raindrops and then turned into the rainstorm. So I want to encourage you, Antonio, to remember that you have overcome this exact situation in the past. And probably you'll have it again because it is so normal, but um, you will overcome it again as well. So definitely that is what the King of Pentacles is saying for you, Antonio. 
The King of Pentacles is in repose, reflecting upon his achievements and successes. And you are being encouraged, Antonio, to do the same right now. Hmm. Okay, so I started shuffling the Archangel deck and out popped right away Clairvoyance. Archangel Raziel says, I am helping your spiritual sight to awaken fully so you can clearly see heavenly love. And what I'm picking up from this, mm -hmm, yep, wow, thanks angels. Um, what I'm picking up from this is this idea of seeing your options and seeing uh, the possibilities. You know, uh, as I was picking up this idea of seeing your possibilities, I was thinking of having blinders on and taking off the blinders. And yeah, that is the message from that June card reading as well. So yeah, wow. Definitely, I'm going to recommend, Antonio, that you go check out that June, I believe it was June, that June card reading, choose one of three reading, um, because I, I remember that I talked about that idea as well, taking off the blinders and looking around. And that's exactly this idea of seeing the possibilities um, that uh, I got from this card. So I really want to encourage you, Antonio, to lift up your head and look around. You know, when we are stuck in the mud, when our tires are stuck in the mud, what do we do? We look at the tires stuck in the mud and we fixate on the tires stuck in the mud and just how stuck they are. And then what do we do? We, we think about all how stuck they are. We look at how stuck they are and those are just really stuck tires. And oh my gosh, we are just focusing on the stuck tires. And we're not lifting up our head to look all around us and see the opportunities, the possibilities that exist. You know, maybe that giant crane is just hanging overhead, ready to pull your car up and out, but you're looking at the tires. And when you're looking at the tires, you can't see the giant crane that's there to lift your car out. So Antonio, I really want to encourage you to lift your head up, look around, and to see the possibilities that exist for you because they are numerous. They are abundant. So Antonio, thank you so much for this great question. You know, we all experience blocks from time to time. We all feel those feelings of being stuck and just not being sure how to move forward. But I promise you that blocks are always temporary that there is always a way through them and that just wiggling a little bit is going to help you to wiggle a big bit and get yourself unstuck. There is always wiggle room, Antonio, which means that you are never completely blocked and you are never completely unable to move forward. Well, thank you all so much for listening. It is an honor to come to you each week with Ask the Stones. Of course, I am always uh, open to receiving questions for Ask the Stones. So if you have questions, please do send them along to me. I can be reached at Christian at standingstoneshealing.com. Uh, send me a message on Facebook. Of course, all names and identifying details are changed. So Antonio's real name is, as he knows, not Antonio. So thank you all so much. I send you blessings and best wishes for your journey. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Ask the Stones. If you have a question for Ask the Stones, please send me an email at Christian at standingstoneshealing.com or connect with me on Facebook at Standing Stones Healing. Thank you and best wishes for your journey.